is me. the start of week number two. Let's see what happens. Technically it's day number five. So from the sound of it, because she has the e-collar and a place, she is probably putting Bane on place and finding a working level. No, no, no. We're gonna work through that today. I know, come on Bane boy. Come on. Uh, Come back uh, in place. Go in place. Uh, you can smile all you want. Uh, <laughs> Damn. I love you too. I know. Yeah, and the thing is, when they get caught up in the moment, if you can't get their attention, they right. stay in the moment. Yeah. But if you're able to say, hey, 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 you yeah. can always control them because they're going, oh, okay, hey, you know what, I gotta check in, I gotta yeah. calm down. Yeah. All right, let's plan on going outside and yep. seeing what uh, what you can do with the remote, and we'll kind of uh, critique a few things to make sure. sure you're good to go. Sure. Oh, Bane, you ready, buddy? Yeah, we're going outside. So I'm gonna draw just a little bit. Tell him sit. Sit. Button. Hey, 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 don't lay down. Thank you. Let's go outside. And I can come outside. Hey, sit. Button, button, button. Good. So this is the first command. So if you're going to um, utilize anything right now, I would utilize a wait command. Because I was this is the threshold. And trying to teach Rory that that's what we have to get away from is the wait instead of stay. Yeah, because this is a sit. Yeah. And then this will be a wait. Hey, I know. You want to lay down? Down. All right, so now he's in a down, and we can tell him, wait. Uh -huh. Now let's walk down a little bit more. Because we told him, wait, if the dog wants, the dog can go, well, maybe I don't even want to go for a walk. I'm going to go back inside, and if that's what the dog's going to do, then that's fine. If the dog wants to get up and go get water, if the dog wants to go on the sofa, whatever it wants to do, say, us. Good. Did you press the button? I didn't. Okay. Saw me move. So that's the power of just using your body to um, kind of counter what the dog's body was doing. Tell him down, button, button, button. Down. Good. Start there. Okay. Look, he's looking proud. <laughs> you look proud. Is your name Bane? I know. Break! Yep. Good. Just by pressing that button, you're gonna keep the dog stuck to you like a magnet. And that way, when you see these kids coming up ahead, you see a dog, you start to notice there's distractions, it's a lot easier to get the dog's attention back. You know, if we're in a conversation and like a hummingbird flies by and I look at it real fast, and then I look back at you, I only was distracted for a second because you already had my attention because we were in a conversation. Right. So what you need to be doing is having a conversation a conversation, a conversation with your dog um, from the get-go, and that's what the e-collar is. It's allowing you to press the button and go, hey, focus, focus, focus. So every time you press the button, think that the command you're saying silently is focus. Okay. All right, so squat down. Let's just get a base and say, come. Come. Button, button, button. Now get excited. Say, come, come, go, go, go. Good. Lots of praise, lots of praise. 
Good. That's down. I am going to have to learn how to do down instead of that. That's or default. we're just going to have to spend a day and you're going to have to know that your dog loves the down. And yeah. every time you tell it to sit, you just need to go sit okay. and just keep it here. And don't let him sit. go into the down because yeah. that's what he wants. So butt, butt, butt. Sit. Tell him to place. So he has an understanding of what place means. He knows that means I'm going to be here a while. He really understands what off-duty means also because he just wants to relax. He doesn't want to be reactive. He likes to just be a calm dog. And he also knows that's when he's going to get a lot of love. His main trigger is people coming into the house. He really wants to see them yeah. and say hello. Oh, yes, that is. Oh, yes, that is. Yes, you look like a lion. All right, so say it really loud. Come! All the way. All the way. There you go. There you go. Nicely done. Good. So this is something else that he has been having. The fridge? But it's our fault. Open it up. It's because we open it and he automatically thinks that it's for him. Because he gets ice. Oh. Ice or blueberries. And he can get it, but you need to make sure he stays on place if you're going to give him some. So walk towards me. Tell the dog place. Place. Now give the dog something. So now walk like around the kitchen island. Off. Place. Yeah, you can come give him some love. He's so good. And that's how amazing good boy. your dog can be. Yeah, he's a good boy. Good job, Bane. Good job, Bane. I'll see you tomorrow, handsome. You're so good. Oh, no. Another great lesson with Bane. The best thing about being an active and responsible dog owner is it makes the training process more fun and it's easier on you, plain and simple. Uh, these clients watched pretty much every video on our Epic Dog Pros TV YouTube channel. Uh, and that way, they really had a good understanding of how we train, what we expect out of our clients, um, and most importantly, some of the exercises and equipment that we use. Um, just, you know, really made for this to be an amazing training process. They had the place, they've ordered their leashes, they're doing their homework. They really are being epic. I absolutely love it. Make sure you guys watch all the videos. Bane, incredible pit bull dog. Be epic or be average. Hey there. Oh, this is Locke. Oh no, it isn't. I'm just oh, loose chat. Yeah. This is Leanne. Hi, Hi Leanne. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. Good to see you. I love you. How was your weekend? Oh, this is what the dog does. It immediately will dictate the relationship. So if it goes, hey, just by putting the e-collar on, just by putting the leash on, I want to get inside. Somebody let me in. Now it's going to come to you and do it, come to you and do it. Right. We're literally letting it get in this cycle. So the best part about this is we're allowed to ultimately get the dog under control. Oh, yeah, you're my friend. <laughs> oh, totally. I'm totally your friend. Now we got an hour place. Uh, just like that. Your own place. The main thing is dogs that are nervous like this need to know there's a place that they can go to feel safe and secure. Because this dog is always in fight or flight, if you can't just tell somebody to sit down who's always in panic, the right. dog's never going to work through it. And you can see the dog wants to go, you sat down, it's like, <laughs> right. is that an introduction for me to come over yes. there? Yes. So, so this is where you need to get the dog love. 
The rule for the next week is you cannot give this dog affection unless it's on place. If the dog comes to you, you need to stand up and walk away. You said, I'm going! Screw it! I'm going to do some training! Harry! Harry Houdini! Harry! Oh my goodness, are you doing the roll? Hello! Are you telling me it's a Friday? Is that what you're telling me? It's a Friday and I don't want to train, I want to sleep. Oh my god, you were so like, I am not going. You cannot make me train. It's Friday. There you go. Oh, is that it? I get one step. Let's go. Come on. Hey, you just a big baby. So Harry doesn't like to go in cars. Harry doesn't like to do much of anything. Very, very afraid of the world. And just freezes, kind of shuts down, puts the brakes on, and does this little protest. Harry. Harry, come. Load up. There you go. Good job. Harry needs some serious help. We're gonna go to the park and work through some some of his issues. Good job.
Alright, so we're working on some off-leash training, some positioning, some flipping in, some turning, some focusing. There's a lot going on right now. This dog is a complete mess. Uh, constantly is turning the wrong way, kind of flipping in these different directions, squirming around in this frantic, confused state. It's literally like dancing with somebody who's never danced before. Imagine if you're an expert dancer and the other person's never danced before. That's what this is like. It's not fun. This is real dog training right here. We're at Huntington Dog Beach, working through all of this dog's problems. As physically exhausting as this is for the dog, it's also mentally exhausting. The dog is starting to calm down a little bit. Good job, Harry. The truth is, if you don't take your dog out in public, your dog will be afraid of the world. It's like a homeschooled child that doesn't get to socialize with other kids, doesn't get to see what's outside of the house. Dogs that are home dogs or dogs that are house dogs ultimately need to get out of the house. You have to take your dog out, have to go for a walk, have to be active and responsible and let your dog experience things in a controlled state. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Good job. All right, so we just finished up with another lesson with Harry, the one-year-old golden retriever. Definitely needs a lot of dog training. Make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel so that way you guys can see the progress that these dogs make. We love to show you from start to finish the dog training process, show you what dog training looks like in real life. Come on, Harry. Yeah, I've trained dogs that are like 13, 14, 15. Really? Teach it to surf too if you really want. Dang, that's wild. Yeah. Because my dog is kind of like sketchy outside. He, he doesn't like the outside world. Like he goes after people, dogs. This so, dog. Yeah. <laughs> but like more aggressive. Like. Okay. We just trained a dog in four days that was a, it's a pit bull. He wants to jump all over, very reactive. Also a little bit fearful of stuff. But really? yeah, all dogs can be trained. Let me grab uh, my phone real fast. As soon as he gets on a leash, he just freaks out. <laughs> Right? Nice. No, totally can. Our um, our programs, so someone will give you a call. We do a free consultation. We'll come out, kind of meet your dog, figure out what you're looking to do. Okay. Uh, our programs are two to three weeks. We guarantee the results, and then we give you a year of group class and pack walk. So every Saturday and Sunday, you have an opportunity to come out with like 30 other dog owners and do some stuff. And that way, you're like bring your dog to like public school, but there's no bullying. It's like we get to control Dude, the environment. Uh, well, Skylar. Skylar, nice to meet you. You guys have fun surfing today. Right on, thank you. Wish I was out there. Yeah, later guys. Another great day training dogs in Huntington Dog Beach. Harry did pretty good. All right, had to park far away, so I had a longboard today. I am in Long Beach, and we're checking on Eugene. Uh, if you guys watched, you probably saw the first five days with Eugene, then he uh, got fixed, so we gave him two weeks off. Let's go see how he's doing. I didn't hear any barking, that's awesome. Come on. Because you played yes side, I recommend another popular game. Still don't guess the song. Do you want to do the Alexa stop? How are you, Eugene? I know I love you too. I know, it's been a while. And you're less of a man. <laughs> oh my goodness. How are you? Oh my god, you're still super small. Where was all his friends at? All day you were upstairs. I thought you could give him just to stay alone. Mm. Oh. You can barely even see it, but you are so dainty. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know. I know, it's good to see you. Best thing that you can do for any type of uh, mouthiness is A, tug or all day long. Gotta make it a game, give the dog something to chew on, and give him the oral fixation that he's having, right? If we start to notice that the dog has uh, ultimately tendencies to wanna do this, that's good. But what'll happen is you know that if you don't do this, the dog's going to do this. Let's give you a little shoes. 
so that's chewing already on the place. Now, to be honest, the only way that that can happen is if you let it. Right? So this has to be seen when the dog goes from chewing on this to, you know, I kind of want to chew on this, and then immediately stop the dog. Whether you grab right there, right? Or you just point, snap, whatever it is, or give your dog a little touch. Don't let the dog do it. Just tell it to cut out. Also, as hard as it's going to be, the dog is super cute. This is as much play as I would really allow the dog to have. Don't let it nibble on your fingers, nothing, ever. Because what will happen is one of these where it's, oh, oh, you're super cute. This, guess what I'm doing? Training the dog to bite and chew. So you need to, anytime it does that, go, oh, I'm not doing that. Okay, I love you. Don't let them chew on you, only give them something. walk to the end and then walk back and that way you're pretty much playing keep away from your dog and you're gonna see if the dog's gonna stick with you for the most part the dog's in a heel by your side see how it's ahead of you I want you to turn back now and then come towards me and it's a huge test because right now you've got five people coming towards you and the dog should want to stick with you and not care about them Good job. Good job. Here's the truth. When your dog sees another person or dog, their excitement level goes up because they're seeing somebody new. So it's like if you and I are here and we're like, all right, well, we're both excited to see each other, but then I see somebody else, I'm like, oh my God, I'm excited to see you too. So that means Right now it's going, who's more excited? Well, we are. Come on, Eugene, come over here. Thank you. I like you guys. You're the coolest people here. And if we're the coolest people here, the dog never wants to see anyone. Because that's why we always keep the dog's interest levels high.
everything over there, all this. Good job. Still up there. Break.